Hey everybody, today's the day. We're gonna announce the winner of the giveaway, so stay tuned. Hey everybody, welcome back. For those of you just joining, this is Tattoo Collectibles, and I'm your host, Eric. Today on the show, we got some Tom DeVita stuff coming at you. If you don't know who Tom is, stick around, you will by the end of this show. And we're gonna, we're gonna start throwing some new segments at you. Uh, we've got one of them coming this week, so stick around. But first, what's in the mail, huh? What's in the mail? All right. This week on What's in the Mail, let me get my Tennessee fighting knife out on the, on, the, on the job here. So, this first thing, and honestly, like, we are back for uh, season three now. And uh, a lot of this stuff that I've got has sat uh, for a little bit. So, so, it's gonna be a surprise to me as well as to you. Now, let's see if we can't uh, find the easy seam. I hate to just tear into things with a knife sometimes because I don't know where things are. So here we go. Okay. So there's a tiny package in that big package. Let's see what this is. <laughs> you just never know. Alright, let's see. Oh, yes, yes. So this is, uh, this is a pretty cool little thing here. So, the last few years of his life, let's just see, make sure this is just a uh, recipient, and it is just a recipient, and it says thank you on the recipient. So, later in uh, Tuttle's life, he stopped having business cards printed all together, and what he carried in his pocket were pennies that were crushed in his shop. He had a machine that you could put a penny in and crush it, and it would uh, essentially be his business card. It had everything printed on it that a business card would. Now, a few weeks back, I saw this, and I've never seen one like this before. I'm not sure why, uh, but this is one of those Lyle Tuttle cards, but not on a penny. Uh, that one's on a nickel. Never seen one on a nickel. I didn't know you could put a nickel through those machines. Uh, apparently you can. Um, this one still has the phone number on it. Uh, so up and 210. Is it? Oh, it's got the Euclid uh, address on it, Euclid, California. So it's got his home address on it. Um, that is just a strange thing. And it's, it's still got the, um, the .net and the phone number on it. This one, uh, I'd have to look to see what year that is because he stopped putting uh, his phone number on him when he realized that crushing pennies uh, might be illegal. So, uh, so he quit doing that um, at a certain date, and I can't remember the date right offhand. Um, if somebody knows, please comment down below, let us know what the date is. Uh, but I got this nickel, I thought it was neat as all get out. Now the pennies, I got most of mine from Lyle. I got every time I saw him, I'd say, "Hey, you got a business card on you?" And he'd hand me one of these pennies. So, I haven't purchased many of these. The ones that I purchased have been before he died, anywhere between ten and twenty dollars. Uh, afterwards, they've gone up exponentially. Now, um, a lot of people are trying to sell them for a hundred, which I don't think we're there yet. Um, I would say twenty-five, thirty on these is probably a fair, uh, maybe as high as 50 if you if you believe it's a rare one. I've got a couple that I believe are rare ones. Uh, one is from his birthday bash uh, 10 or 15 years ago. One is for the uh, anniversary of the first Houston um, convention. I believe those are worth a little bit more. Uh, the common ones, I would say the older you get them, the more they're worth. Uh, the newer ones without a date, uh, a little bit less. The ones on a nickel, this one I paid $70 for on eBay, and I do not regret a cent of that. Um, I think that is absolutely worth it. 
I will keep it and cherish it. Uh, it will go into my collection and never come out again. Um, so that's, that's the first thing we had today. Now, I believe we've got a couple different Tuttle things. I'm gonna open this one next because I, I believe it's a Tuttle thing too. You all know I'm a Tuttle maniac, man. I am a, a Teenage Mutant Ninja Tuttle. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna edit that right out, that was dumb as shit. So, we'll see if my editor listens to me anyway. Let's see what this is. Okay, this is from Epic Relics. Uh, they're a company out in um, uh, California. And they do a bunch of, of um, pictures. Like, they always have like the coolest pictures for sale. This one, that's a neat way of putting that in there. Oh, these are beautiful too. This is a contact sheet of Lyle with his sister. And that is just a beautiful set of photos there. Now, you may in the future see someone quite unscrupulous cutting these up and selling tiny little photos. Um, if they do, you know it came from a contact sheet just like this. Now, what they used to do, for those of you who do not know, what they used to do when they when they take rolls of film, because back then it was expensive to print these, so they didn't want to waste a bunch of time and money if the shot was blurry or if it wasn't quite uh, framed right. So what they would do is they would print all of the negatives, the same size as a negative, onto one sheet of photo paper. Now, this is probably a third of what this sheet was. But they laid them out, they, they printed this much of it off, and, um, and then they saw which ones they wanted to make enlargements of. Now, because of digital technology, we can now take these uh, contact photos and blow them up and still keep every bit, because when you get down on these, every bit of the information is there. So we can now blow them up. Later on in the year, I am talking about doing a poster of some sort. Uh, I've got a bunch of pictures and uh, pictures on negatives. So I own the original negatives to them. So we'll be making a poster later on in the year. I might make one of him and his sister uh, just because these are really great, like candid shots. You can you can see the, the love and the smiles in their faces are, are just, they're genuine and they're nice, you know? So I might make a poster of this, I might not, uh, but stay tuned. You may, uh, you may actually uh, end up getting one in, um, in a giveaway sometime. And uh, we've got that giveaway coming up today. So you all get to see that. And if you've made it this far into the video, you might as well hit the like and subscribe button. Now we've hit 500 subscribers. If we hit a thousand, I'll do a dance. I'll do a little dance or I will pick, I'll, well, I'll do something. I'll do something that you all pick me to do. Uh, you want me to eat hot sauce? I'll eat hot sauce. You want me to sell something? I might sell something. Depending on what it is. All right, so this came from uh, Maryland. And I've, I've seen a few of these out there. And I really, really dig them. Oh my God. So, Tom DeVito used to do a bunch of this. <laughs> this is completely Tom DeVito style right here. This is on a jumbo chicken box uh, sliver. Now, Tom used to do stuff on, uh, oh, let's check the envelope. Wait, ooh. You always gotta check the envelope. Um, I've almost thrown stuff away several different times. So, Tom DeVita used to do stuff like with um, uh, Xerox and um, rubbings of like stencils and Tom was a good time. He he was a he was a uh, a strange cat, um, but he he did like. His uh, flash was done on wood. You know, like, he was just, he was off the beaten path. Uh, even for tattoo artists, and that is saying something because a lot of us are well off the beaten path. 
Tom definitely was the grandfather of the off the beaten path uh, artist. I'm gonna show you a little bit more about him here in a second, uh, so stick around for that. But this is a DaVita Tattoo Gallery uh, card. It says American Folk Art. And then you can tell that this is like, this has been Xeroxed onto a uh, construction paper feel kind of deal. And you can tell that he did them in sheets and then he hand cut them. Look at that, look at that edge on the back. You can tell that's hand cut. And then he also did these, um, these tattoos need not be high priced things, uh, which I think is awesome. This one's from 1984. Uh, it's when he was on um, East 4th Street uh, in Manhattan. And it's even got a tattoo archive uh, sticker on there. That is super cool. It says display in New York City, not for public. That is super cool. Now this, this is on photo paper. Uh, this looks like it was made in a, a photo lab, which is super nice. Like I said, he he grabbed a bunch of inspiration from like graffiti of the day. Like he, he liked how things were layered over top of each other. And you could tell in his art because he did a bunch of layering over top of stuff, which I always thought was neat. I got this. This is a, um, it was a promotional deal, a uh, little poster that he did that he put up. Now he did uh, tattoos for 30 bucks. Uh, and even at conventions, he would do them for 30 and, and people flocked him, just loved him. You know, uh, he also had the big, uh, the big back piece from uh, Huck Spaulding. Uh, Huck didn't even want to do it. You know, he was like, uh, you, you can't do one image that big, you know. Uh, but DeVita was the one that was like, no, we need to, you know, we need to start doing some bigger and kind of push the industry into doing more of a custom thing. Uh, like I said, you'll see more of him. Uh, check this out. Uh, we'll do this right now. Check this out. This is a story about Tom DeVita. Thomas Paul DeVito was born in Manhattan on May 20th, 1932. He grew up in East Harlem. His father, Thomas DeVito, an immigrant from Sicily, worked in a butcher shop at a hospital. His mother was Anna Traub. Tom dropped out of elementary school and never attended high school. He worked for a short time in a scrap metal yard, but spent his late teens and early 20s in jail for armed robbery in the Bronx in 1950. By the late 50s, he had moved to Alphabet City in the East Village, where he worked as a live model for art schools. He began creating art to impress a potential girlfriend. I had to be something, so I told her I was an artist, he told the New York Times in 2014. I had to show her I was an artist, so I started doing some artwork. He wound up selling his work in Washington Square Park. Mr. DeVita never received formal training in tattooing. He learned the craft by observing tattoo artists who inked his body and through trial and error. He got his first tattoo around the age of 17. He said, from William Moskowitz in the Bowery. Later, he got a large tattoo of a dragon on his back from Huck Spaulding, who founded Spaulding & Rogers, a large manufacturer and distributor of tattoo machines and equipment. November 2nd, 1961, the day after tattooing was officially banned in New York City, Tom DeVita opened his first shop. He tattooed mostly working class people from the neighborhood and tough guys that other tattooers didn't want to tattoo. He opened an hour after dawn and would close by three or four in the afternoon, seven days a week. It was the time of day that the tough guys and the miscreants were on their best behavior. So it kept problems to a minimum. One time, Tony Polito stopped by and saw some of the same rough characters he was tattooing in Brooklyn sitting around DeVita's shop quietly reading National Geographic with classical music playing. And he was astounded. DeVita used to tell people that he woke up at first light and he slept near the front window. So as long as there was light, you could call his name quietly and he would open up. But if it was still dark, you better not come back until he forgot your face. He had an erratic approach towards age restrictions as well. One Irish kid from Uptown got both of his arms completely covered from DeVita. And when he turned 18, Tom refused to tattoo him anymore. Now you can get tattooed by anyone. If a customer asked for a simple Black Panther, 
Mr. DeVita might add bright red scratch marks around the claws, or embellish an image of a rose with a dark radiating spiderweb behind it. His tattoos were bold, stylish, and crude. Abstract. They are often replicated by tattoo artists today. I was so blown away by the fact that he had his own distinctive hand-drawn flash, Mr. Hardy said, referring to the stencils that the tattoo artists display for clients. It opened my eyes to the fact that you could broaden the idea of what people wanted in tattoos. If Mr. DeVita's illustrations were revolutionary, so was his placement of designs on the body, said Scott Harrison, a tattoo artist and one of Mr. DeVita's customers. The standard for tattooing was that you place the stencil in the center of the body part, Mr. Harrison said. But Tom would place it with compositional attention and follow the lines of the body where it would have the most attention and power. Mr. DeVita was also known for layering tattoos, an effect that mimicked the ripped posters and overlaid graffiti common on buildings in the East Village. His flash was displayed not on sheets of white paper, but on fruit crates and milk crates and pieces of plywood he found in the street. Opinionated, contrarian, and at times withdrawn, DeVita struggled with a lifelong tremor which could cause him to flinch. He learned he had Parkinson's disease, which caused his hands to shake in later years. He developed all these techniques to mitigate or enhance the shaking, Harrison said. He could use it as an expressionistic tool. He moved to Newburgh in 1990. His wife is the only immediate survivor. His younger brother, Ronald, died in 2012. DeVita stopped producing large-scale tattoos around 2001, but continued to tattoo his signature on clients at conventions, still for $30, and continued to draw, paint, and sketch until shortly before his death on April 5th, 2018. Okay, this is what you all have been waiting for, the 500 subscriber giveaway. Let me get up close to the camera here, and we are going to spin it. Sammy Ingram. Sammy, you are the winner of the 500 subscriber giveaway. So please DM me with your um, with your address and your name and all that. You can get a hold of us on uh, Instagram or on Facebook. Both of the addresses are at the, the beginning of this show. Congratulations, Sammy. It's an awesome prize that you're about to get. And the rest of you stay tuned. When we hit a thousand subscribers, I'm gonna do something crazy. So stick around. That's all we have for you today. Hopefully you enjoyed the giveaway. I'll get that out as soon as I get your, uh, your mailing address. And uh, until next week, what I want you all to do is to stay safe, be nice to each other, and keep on collecting. Hey everybody, thanks for watching, and please hit the subscribe button down below, and check out these videos. We've worked real hard on these too, and I think if you enjoyed this one, Enjoy those days.